welcome to my epic motherhood. Today I wanted to do a quick video on minimalism. So what is minimalism? Why do we minimize and how do we minimize? Minimalism seems like it's this fad, everybody's doing it. Oftentimes the picture that comes to mind with minimalism is stark white room, very little furniture, a certain decorating style, or minimalism might mean that you only have 25 things in your closet or one coffee cup. I happen to collect coffee cups and if anyone tried to tell me to get rid of them, I would be very upset. Those are special, they have memories. But I consider myself a minimalist, at least at heart, even though perhaps the environment around me doesn't exactly look minimal. Did I mention I have six kids? So what does minimalism mean? <laughs> Tell me what it means. I have done a lot of research on minimalism and watched a ton of videos and done a lot of minimizing in my house. And so what it comes down to is basically being intentional with the things that are in your home, with the things that you wear, with the things that are around you, and basically going through your home and making sure that the things around you are the things that you want to be around you. There's a quote that I love that I heard from a minimalist blogger that I also love, Ali Casaza. I'll link to her stuff below. And she quotes someone and says, the way you spend your days is of course the way you live your life. And if we are spending so much of our day dealing with our stuff, we're not able to spend it doing the most important thing, which is being with our family, being with the people that we love. So why do we minimize? Why? Why should we hop on this train, this minimalism fad train? I think the why of minimalism is really important because if you don't have a good reason for why you're doing it, you're going to get discouraged because it's a lot of work. Okay, we have a lot of stuff. I read a statistic somewhere that said the average American home has 30,000 items. That means when you start minimizing, you have 30,000 decisions to make. So why? Why would you do it? My why, my reason for minimizing is that I have six kids and a little over two years ago, I got totally overwhelmed with the clutter and with the mess and I couldn't handle it anymore. And so I found this thing called minimalism and thought, I can't keep going like this. How am I supposed to function as a mom to my kids when we're totally overwhelmed by stuff and all I'm doing is housework and picking up after them and fussing at them to pick up after themselves. I wanted something different. And so I started to go through the toys and I started to go through the clothes and I started to go through the dishes. So I'm hitting these main areas that carry a lot of stress for me and immediately saw a difference. So you have to find your why. Why do you want to minimize? Why do you want to get stuff out of your house? I have found that the less stuff we have in our house, the less stress I have, and the more time I get to spend with my kids. And for me, that's a pretty good why. So the big question everybody wants to know is how? How do you clear out your house? Where do you even start? There are lots of different methods for cleaning up your house. Guess what they all start with? You just do it. Just do it. It really doesn't matter where you start in your house. If you just start making decisions and looking at your things and being intentional with them, pick it up and say, do I need this? Do I want this? Does it add value to my life? If not, I do appreciate the order of the KonMari method because there are items that are difficult to get rid of. There are items that we have sentimental attachments to. So she suggests clothing first, then books, then paper, then kimono, which is kitchen, bathrooms, garage, miscellaneous items. And then the last group that you go through is sentimental items. And the benefit of that is that by the time you've worked through all the other areas of your house, when you get to sentimental items, you've made a bunch of yes and no decisions. And that makes it easier to make yes and no decisions about things that are one thing that I also do is I often will keep a maybe pile. I'm not sure if we're going to use it. We may use it in the next few months. We may not. This may fit me in the next few months. It may not. <laughs> oh my God. And so a maybe pile can be really helpful to ease the pain of 
Also remember that there's a difference between decluttering and organizing. Decluttering is actually getting the stuff out of your house and organizing is actually tidying the things that you're keeping in your house. So often we'll jump into organizing and we haven't decluttered yet so we're organizing a bunch of stuff that we don't even need or we don't even want to keep anyway. So do the decluttering first. Once you have gotten rid of the crap, valuable property. Then you can organize it. There's a ton of ideas on Pinterest of how to organize things. There's a KonMari method of organizing things. There's all sorts of bins and boxes you can buy and do whatever you want. Really, the secret to organizing is taking the time to actually put it away where it belongs. Didn't your mother ever tell you a place for everything and everything in its place? That's my epic motherly hood wisdom. Just remember, especially with kids, minimizing is about progress, not perfection. You will never have a fully minimal house. By the time that you get through all of your house, the first area you started in will need to be gone through again. It's a continual cycle. Don't be discouraged. It's okay. Learning to be intentional with the items that we have and changing your lifestyle so that you only are keeping the things around you that you use and that you find beautiful. That's a really valuable thing to pass on to your kids. And it really is a very freeing lifestyle and it kind of opens your eyes to all the stuff that we have. There's stuff everywhere. Walmart is full of stuff. Goodwill is full of stuff. We have birthday parties and get more stuff. We walk through Target and stuff just magically appears in our cart. It's so easy to bring more stuff into our lives, but taking a step back and slowing down and becoming intentional about the things that we put into our lives and that we keep around us, that is the true heart of minimalism. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want a review of any of the minimizing methods and good luck on your minimizing journey.